straight people having sex is missionary position. Is that real? <laughs> Do you like butt plugs? Open up. You open up. Hi guys, I'm Hannah. I'm Sadie. And we're not straight. Welcome to our channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, definitely hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can get notifications when we mm -hmm. release new videos on Sundays. Yeah. And we have a few announcements for you guys. We want to thank our new patrons. We have a Patreon. It's been awesome. Uh, so thank you to Jamie D. And Dressa W. And Alex P. Yeah, and then we have one special announcement that we wanted to share with you guys. We've been recently following a kind of newer artist mm -hmm. whose name is Sarah Barrios, and she recently also came out as bisexual, so... Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Good uh, girl. We're all about it. Yes. And she released a new single on Friday. Mm -hmm. I think Friday. I think. Yeah. It's Very recently. Um, <laughs> it's called Somebody I'm Proud Of. Definitely go check it out. Yeah. Give her some love. Yeah. 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 And then one last just kind of like uh, paying respect. Uh, we want to just honor Ruth Bader Ginsburg for all the work that she did throughout mm -hmm. her life as mm -hmm kind of a trailblazer for women's rights and all of the work that she dedicated and her voice and her efforts in a totally male-dominated sphere of society. Now it's our turn. So, our message, vote. Yes. Vote like your life vote. depends on it. Because it does. Great. So, we're coming back to the sex series. Uh, it's been a big hit with you guys and we love talking about it. I love talking about it. <laughs> we have questions from you guys, both through our Patreon and from Instagram. We're going to answer a few of them. Yeah. Okay, overwhelmingly, the most commonly asked question is, what was our first time like? This is my worst fear, full disclosure. I can theorize <laughs> about sex, but I am terrified of talking about my own personal experiences, so... You heard it here first, folks. I never talk about this. And here you go. I don't even know if we've ever talked about this with each other. Yeah, this is the ultimate premiere. Director's cut. <laughs> wow. Um, our first time, a little bit of background. I was somewhat terrified. I was 100% terrified. Uh, mostly of just not knowing what it was going to be like and worrying Same. I was going to like do something wrong or... And I'd only ever had sex with a man. And I had had to mentally prepare myself for that as well. I like did a lot of research. I desensitized myself to male genitalia. Wow, that's fun. That's a fun thing to say <laughs> on the internet. Uh, but that's something I didn't really have to do because I have female genitalia. So it was like, I know, I know what I'm getting into, theoretically. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know what it'll feel like. So my mindset was that I knew that you were going to be a little nervous, maybe a little more <laughs> nervous than I was. I felt, like it, I felt like it was on me, I guess. I felt like I should be the one to go forward with feigned confidence um, because someone had to. I don't know. Yeah, and to be honest, like I, I was like so terrified that I didn't even think about it, and I was just like, mm. if, like, I was into it, and if I was like, if she takes the lead, I will follow, but weren't ready to take the lead. I wasn't ready to take the lead. Yeah, and I was scared to like have it become this big, like scary ordeal. So I kind of just mm -hmm. wanted to like dive into it, as get long it as over you were with. Okay with yeah. it. Yeah, not get it over with. That sounds kind of like but kind of yeah, kind of. Um, so I was like, we're just going to go for it if she's okay with it. And I remember asking you like, is this okay? Yeah. And I don't even think you said anything out loud. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. I think it was like a one word answer. I think that word was yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it wasn't like, like that was all you could give me. That was yeah. like, yeah. Yes. Um, and then kind of like a nervous, oh my God. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, it was like. A little bit cautious and then I just kind of went for it and I think what helped was knowing my own self and doing what I imagined would feel good for me honestly nothing to add okay <laughs> so to add. small piece of advice um one talk about it if you feel comfortable uh, two well maybe this should be one make sure you have consent Always, always, always. Two, talk about it if you're comfortable. And then three, 
it's okay if it goes poorly. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fumble through it. It's okay if it's uncomfortable or awkward. Um, you learn and you grow, and that's yeah. what we've done too. Yeah, and like afterward, it's if it like goes poorly and you guys like laugh about it and whatever, like mm -hmm. then okay, we know that that doesn't work. We'll do something different next time. Exactly. Um, it can be a process of elimination too. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect every time, and yeah. it hasn't been perfect for us no. at all. So. And we're still growing and we're still learning and yes. we're still trying different things because it turns out there are like a million different ways to have sex if you're in a female-female relationship. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that was terrifying. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> how did you overcome shame around sex and bodies, rooting in religion and general patriarchy? This is such a good question. Such a good question. I think maybe you can speak more to that. I think I've been working on it for like the last 10 years, but it's definitely something that has been renewed in my in this relationship mm -hmm. i think that a lot of what we are taught about sex is so so limited and so limiting once i realized there are people who experience sex in ways that i didn't learn about mm -hmm. i started to really question the whole kind of system of teaching young mm -hmm. people about sex and about their bodies when i started to learn that that was a really narrow perspective and a really focused a male-centric uh, or like penis centric, I think focus. Mm -hmm. That was when I was able to really let go of a lot of the stuff that I had been taught because I realized the system isn't made for me. So mm. once I realized that I was kind of like, okay, then now I just need to start asking the questions, which I've shared openly. Mm -hmm. I'm really hesitant to do, um, yeah. but I did sort of, I did start kind of like gathering silently gathering information from like people that I talked to and friends that would say things and things like that. But I like what you said about that. That's freeing. Yeah. Like realizing if it doesn't apply to me at all, then I kind of get to decide for myself. Yeah. And I think that everybody should. Is waiting to sex, wait, is, is waiting, waiting to, to sex, <laughs> is waiting to have sex even a thing anymore? Or does our society just have sex in every relationship? Um, I think it's a thing. Absolutely. It's totally a thing. I think what is different from historical models of what is pure and right and good mm -hmm. that are rooted in Christianity or, um, or any other sort of in institution is that people get to decide for themselves and people always should decide for themselves. And if, if your decision for yourself is that I want to follow the guidelines that this religion or this organization or my family or my own ethics and morals dictate, then that's awesome, but you should always reflect on it. And if that's what you want, that's excellent, but it should never be imposed on you. Yeah. How did you learn what to do to make each other feel good? Sex between two women isn't shown in the media or taught in sex ed. Mm. Honestly, I don't think it should be thought of as that different from a relationship between a man and a woman. I think that there should be questions, there should be mm -hmm. communication, um, and you should listen to seek out and pay attention to and respond to feedback. Yes. I think that between a man and a woman, it's often assumed what's supposed to feel good, even when it doesn't. I think about women being fingered and how often women are like, oh God, like a man doesn't understand how to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, and we all know that it doesn't work the way most men think it does and it doesn't feel good. <laughs> uh, so assuming that that... <laughs> So assuming that that's what feels good in a straight relationship is also horrible. So it yeah. should always be about feedback. It should always be about questions. And it, I think, should always start with knowing yourself um, mm -hmm. and helping. Or if you don't know yourself, your partner can help you explore yeah. um, and trying different things and taking it slow and asking, like, does this feel good? Is it okay? And making it okay to say, not really, but can we try this? Yeah, I think a lot of times people, especially women, are hesitant to say, this doesn't feel good because mm -hmm. it's then perceived as like a, uh, what is that? Like a, uh, a diss? An insult? It's an like insult. A... That's the word. An insult. Um, it's, yeah. it's received as an insult because it's like, yeah. well, I'm doing this for you, you know? Right. And it's like, you're doing a bad job yeah. when that's not what it's about. And we hear women talk so much about faking it, faking yeah. orgasms all the time. Ooh. And that should never be a thing. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be faking orgasms to make someone feel better. Right, right. And it like, shouldn't make you feel bad to say like, hey, this doesn't really feel good. Can we try something else? Yeah, and if your partner says that to you, it's not your fault. That's not a, that's not like uh, an insult to you. 
everybody is different and what feels yes. good to me is going to be different yes. from what feels good to Hannah or anybody else, yes. right? So what we all want is just based on our own individual desires, experiences, and needs, and, and that's it. Yeah, so it seems like the biggest gift you can give your partner is to put your own ego aside. Yes. And say, all right, I'm here for you, and if I'm truly, honestly here for you, then what you say matters, and what mm -hmm. I'm feeling personally about how I'm doing yeah. doesn't. Right. Or is secondary. I think I've learned that Hannah does a really good job of that. I, she always asks questions and never is like, she's never like offended by anything mm -hmm. that I say. And she's always like very thoughtful about how she approaches talking about sex with me because she knows um, how many hangups I have. And <laughs> <laughs> um, so I really appreciate that. Thanks. How did we decide to talk about this? And how did we com become comfortable talking about this? Oh my God. If we are. I'd say so much practice. Yes. Oh my gosh. Becoming comfortable with... I don't think I could even say the word sex on like so many of our past YouTube videos. If you go to the very beginning, I probably talk about like intimacy and like being physically close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would agree. And I think it's, yeah, honestly practice. Like two years worth to yes. get to this. But I do think that it takes like prioritization. Like yes. it takes a willingness from both parties. Um, and yeah, it's a little uncomfortable at first, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Yeah. Yeah, and we decided to talk about this on our YouTube channel because it has been so central to our relationship mm -hmm. and we wanted to share that fact with you guys and we wanted to share that experience with you because mm -hmm. it's been so, so, so helpful for us and mm -hmm. I think it's really healthy and I've never felt more connected to a partner than I do with Hannah and that is solely due to the fact that we talk about everything. Um, I mean, Hannah is the person that I talk to about like anything if I'm scrolling through social media and I see yeah. something like and I mention it out loud and then we can mm -hmm. have a conversation. We've also watched a lot of shows uh, like Married at First Sight, which we shared yes. with you guys earlier. And we recently started watching Terrace House, oh which gosh. is a Japanese show. Mm -hmm. And there was like one event that happened on the show that was like really questionable. It was just like a lack of consent. Yes. And so we talked about that a lot. And so it, it has been like really helpful just to be. That's a great point. Can I, sorry. Yeah. Um, watching shows together. Yeah. Where sex happens. Uh, I highly recommend sex education as a yes. show. Yes. Um, so it's hilarious. Good. It's not like an educational show first and foremost. It's a comedy. Yeah. Um, but watching shows can help you, can like bridge that gap and uh -huh. bridge over the awkwardness so that you can react to the show and talk about the show and it doesn't have to be so Coming personal. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that can be a way to kind of broach the topic. Yeah, I think I feel, if I bring up, if I bring up a topic about sex, mm -hmm. I feel really implicated in it because it's mm -hmm. obvious that I was thinking about it or that I, you know. Yeah. So having that like kind of neutral zone of yes. like, Yes. We're just watching this show. Yes. Yeah, sex education is really good. Um, Terrace House, Married at First Sight is also yeah. really interesting. Easy, yeah. Easy is another good one. Yes. So maybe find a show that you're both into and then talk about the show. And, and talk, then yeah, <laughs> talk about the sex in the show. It's yeah, so, by the end of so the conversation, good. you're like, so what do you feel about that? Like maybe for yourself, can we talk yeah. about that? <laughs> All right, last one for right now. Um, how do you handle awkward questions about your sex life from straight people? Okay. I, quick PSA to straight people. Don't ask queer don't people ask. how they have sex. That's weird. No one asks you. Don't ask queer people. If they're, if they are a close friend, and this is a conversation that you regularly have about various yes. friends' sex lives, like in this, in whatever group of friends you're in, awesome. Mm -hmm. But when you ask someone about their sex life, they should already feel supported by you and they should mm -hmm. already feel safe with you talking about anything that that you are about to ask them if you don't know that person don't do it don't do it that's weird it's that's so creepy weird. It's, it's so weird. inappropriate it's so rude. it's so rude yeah so maybe if you're feeling sassy enough and someone asks you and you don't feel comfortable responding ask them right back how do you have sex with your partner mm -hmm. what do you do yeah and I do want to say for everyone who's asked us, um, we, we put our relationship on YouTube and mm -hmm. we invite those questions. So mm -hmm. if I don't mean to implicate you guys, but, um, for example, my mom recently told me about a person who was driving through a bank drive through and knew that the bank teller was queer 
and asked her how she has sex with her partner. The and so bank teller. This, yeah, just like a, a person that you kind of interact with infrequently. And this young woman, this bank teller, was telling my mom, I felt so uncomfortable, it was so weird. And my mom was like, yeah, that's weird. Like, so yes, weird. that is weird. That's the situation we're talking yes. about. And of course we get comments of people asking, um, or strangers asking, that are inappropriate and tone matters and context matters and the relationship matters. Yeah. Um, Someone recently commented, where's the porn side of the channel? Um, <laughs> that one? That's how I feel about Not that. a thing. <laughs> Yeah. I always want to respond to those with like third grade insults, like up your button around the corner. <laughs> There's a tube. Up your button around the corner through the tube and out your boob. There's a tube directly from up my butt <laughs> to my nipple. To your boob, yeah. It's the whole thing, the whole mechanism. The whole mechanism. It's kind of a funnel. Just one mechanism. <laughs> um, great. So, realistically, how do you handle questions from straight people about your sex life? Um, if someone were to ask me and I wanted to be kind of like gentle about my response, I would probably say, this isn't something I really feel comfortable talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if I'm feeling pretty sassy, I would say, why would you ask me that? Oh, I love that so much. I love that so much. It's so understated, um, but forces them to state their intentions yeah. clearly. Like, why would you ask me that? Oh, because all I've seen on porn websites are women scissoring. Is that real? Yeah, um, all I see about straight people having sex is missionary position. Is that real? <laughs> do you like butt plugs? Maybe that's my favorite response. <laughs> How do you guys have sex? Do you like taking it in the butt? <laughs> I've heard straight couples do that sometimes. That's what you should say. <laughs> oh my god, I would literally never say that. Oh but I wouldn't funny. either, I just joke it is, about it. It is funny to, to joke about. To kind of zoom out on why people ask those questions, mm. I think that people view queer sexualities as the core and most central and most salient piece of a person's identity when they're not heterosexual. So if I'm gay or if I'm pan mm -hmm. or if I'm bi or whatever, that has to be <laughs> the most important part of my identity. Yeah. And that might be true, but for most of us, that's not the most important piece of our identity. The mm -hmm. fact that I am gay does not is not the most important thing about me in every situation. So I think that when people ask those questions, they think that because you are outwardly or openly queer, that anything about that identity is fair game to ask about. It also seems like to that extent, they view that identity as above your humanity. Yes. Like, they see that identity as, like, God, it's like a slur almost, but, like, saying someone is a queer or a gay person, mm -hmm. or a gay, period, mm -hmm. instead of a person who happens to be gay. Yeah, or... So they forget the rules, that come, the social rules that come yeah. with humanity and respecting someone as they are because we are all people. And one last thought about that last question. People ask questions about things that they don't understand. Yes. So... It makes sense for there to be the curiosity. What doesn't make sense is for there to be a lack of a filter on it. Um, right. Or a lack of like context or relationship building that comes first. So if you want to be super, super extra nice, you can answer with grace. Um, and educate. And educate. And that's, I mean, and you are not responsible for any, no. anyone else's education but your own. No. But um, if you are feeling brave and have the, if you're feeling brave enough and have the emotional and mental capacity for that in that moment mm -hmm. um and that time. can also yeah that can also really build a bridge for you and that person as well as that person and other queer people that they might interact with yeah cool Great. we have so many more really really awesome thoughts that we want to share with you guys yeah. so we will be back with this next week yeah. thanks so much for your questions and thank you so much for bringing up other mm -hmm. incredibly important topics that we haven't covered yet and we'll be we sure will get to there. yeah yeah these are great questions and we have so many more so yeah. thank you we'll see you on friday and then again on sunday yeah all right bye, bye. say hi honey <laughs> <laughs>